ribosomes an important organelle in bacteria discovered and named by claude this is also referred to as claude's particles let us look at what are the learning outcomes of this session the ribosomes are organelles that are membrane less they have no membranes and however are involved in one of the most important aspects of bacteria and that is protein synthesis prokaryotic ribosomes are made up of two subunits a large subunit and a small subunit with each of them having distinct structure and function we will also be able to comprehend that both the ribosomal subunits are constituted by ribosomal rna and proteins one of the ribosomal rna has a catalytic action of synthesizing the peptides and this marks something that is very important now let us go to the structural aspects of ribosomes and look at its basic constituents so in a bacterial cell where the cytoplasm has numerous innumerable number of proteins along with the numerous number of proteins that are present are also present certain granules like starch granules or inclusion bodies and also particles that are ribosomes now when one looks at or has studied the uh, ribosomes in uh, detail it was found that the ribosome particle that is present in the bacteria is of the 70s type now what does the 70s refer to the s over here stands for swedberg's unit which in turn is basically nothing but the sedimentation coefficient and when you add the 70 to this swedberg unit it is indirectly giving you an indication of the particle size so uh, when the bacterial extracts are uh, centrifuged uh, using density gradient centrifugation then based on their density particles are separated and one of the particles separated is the ribosomes and they have a size of what is referred to as 70s when they are associated so when we say they are associated it means the two subunits that is the large subunit and the small subunit are associated so here is what you have the large subunit and this is the small subunit when need arises this large sub, uh, what is observed is that when translation has to begin the two subunits will come together to form the 70s but otherwise it remains as two subunits that is a small subunit which is the 30s so the particle size refers referred to the small subunit as 30s and that referred to for the large subunit is 50s so as mentioned when the translation or the protein synthesis has to begin the two subunits assemble to form the 70s particle and when the translation ends or terminates the two subunits which are present as a particle assembled are dissociated again into 30s and 50s so this association and dissociation has led to what is called as the ribosome cycle and with every ribosome cycle you have a ribosome translating the mrna into its protein now what is again a very important find is that for association of the two subunits magnesium ions are required several studies have indicated that a certain critical concentration of magnesium ions are required for the two subunits to assemble when the magnesium levels are decreased beyond a certain concentration then the association of the two subunits to form the 70s particle has been found to be uh, anomalous and therefore uh, a magnesium is something that is attributed to to contribute to uh, forming the structure of the ribosome now when you look at more detail into what is the Uh, individual subunits of the ribosome made up of so let us first begin with the small subunit which is referred to as a 30s in the prokaryotic system the 30s comprises of 21 proteins and since these proteins are present in the small subunit they are referred to as s1 s2 
S3. The S here standing for small subunit. And there are small 21 proteins present in this uh, um, small subunit. The other constituent that makes up the 30S is the 16S ribosomal RNA. Again here what you can observe is that the ribosomal RNA per se also has a size that is referred to as 16S. So the 16S are RNA and the 21 proteins comprise what is called as a small uh, subunit. Therefore, effectively a ribosome is nothing but a ribonucleoprotein or they are what is called as ribonucleoproteins. Doesn't have any membrane but this particular conformation has come to because of the association of 16S rRNA and the 21 proteins. The 21 proteins that bind to the 16S rRNA are importantly giving stability to the molecule and also protecting the 16S rRNA and allowing it to carry out its function properly. Now, interestingly, the 16S rRNA, rRNA being single strands, single polynucleotide strands. The 16S rRNA is a large polynucleotide strand, but because of complementarity within its sequences, it folds. So the RNA folds into a particular conformation as you can see. So you can see several different uh, secondary structures that are formed. So secondary structures by uh, hairpin loop structures, etc. So they fold to form a particular conformation and therefore in this folded form the 16S rRNA functions this best. There is another interesting facet associated with the 16S rRNA and that is that 16S rRNA is used to carry out phylogenetic studies because uh, across different species of bacteria the 16S rRNA is a conserved molecule. So when one basically wants to find out also the ancestry of a particular bacteria. What has been observed is there is a related similarities with a very distant related bacteria. And so one can also find out from what a bacteria or from how or from which bacteria a particular bacteria has evolved. So ancestry studies, so basically phylogenetic studies have been uh, carried out using 16S rRNA in bacteria. So therefore, uh, 16S rRNA is a molecule that is used to actually identify a bacteria. So when one sequences, isolates the 16S rRNA from a bacteria, sequences the 16S rRNA and aligns the sequence to the databases that are already there for 16S rRNA, one can easily identify which bacteria has been isolated. If there is no match, with the 16S rRNA present in the database, then one tends to understand that a new bacteria has been discovered. But what is important here to note is that 16S rRNA is important as a molecule for identification of bacteria. The 30S per se uh, is therefore made up of, I repeat, 16S rRNA and 21 proteins, while the 50S will have a larger number of proteins, about 31 proteins, and each of the prote proteins are labeled as L1, L2, L3 since they belong to the large subunit. So to differentiate between the proteins of the small subunit and the large subunit, the L and the S do the needful. Along with the 31 proteins, the 50S has two ribosomal RNAs. One is what is called as a 23S ribosomal RNA. So you can see that this is larger in size in comparison to the 16S rRNA and therefore attributing to the fact that 50S is a larger subunit plus it has an additional ribosomal RNA which is the 5S rRNA. Together this contributes to the structural uh, uh, stability of the 50S but what is most important is that this 23S rRNA is acting as an enzyme and therefore it is a ribozyme. A RNA molecule that acts as an enzyme. So the translation that is carried out by the ribosome involves formation of peptide bonds. 
So the formation of peptide bonds, the catalysis of formation of the peptide bonds, the onus of that lies with 23S rRNA and not the proteins. So in the functionary of synthesis of proteins, it is not the proteins that are the enzymes, but it is the ribosome, ribozyme or it is a 23S rRNA that is acting as an enzyme to synthesize the entire polypeptide. Hence, this becomes another important feature that is associated with the ribosome and that is its large subunit has a catalytic site, has an active center and the active center is comprised um, of the ribosomal RNA per se. Now, let us look at the structure functional aspects of 30S subunit. So, when one looks at the smaller subunit. The smaller subunit of the ribosome is understood to be the decoding center. So looking at the central dogma, one knows that the DNA is actually used as a template to synthesize the RNA and this RNA is used to synthesize the proteins. So this is what the central dogma is all about. Now the process of DNA being used as a template to synthesize RNA is termed as transcription and the process of the decoding of the RNA to produce the proteins or the polypeptides is what is called as translation. So here what is effectively understood that in the translation process decoding of the RNA is an important aspect of translation and it is this small subunit that is associated with decoding of the RNA and hence it is known as the decoding center. Let us now understand why is it called as the decoding center. So uh, when one looks at the structure of uh, the small subunit, uh, it is importantly noted that the decoding of the codes in the RNA happens in the small subunit and that decoding links with the amino acid coming together through peptide bonds to form the polypeptide. This is not happening in the small subunit. This happens in the large subunit. But the decoding is happening in the small subunit. Therefore, there has to be some connect between the small subunit and what is happening in the large subunit. And that connect is what is called as a through uh, another uh, uh, RNA and that is the transfer RNA. So transfer RNA acts as an adapter that ensures that the codes in the mRNA that have been decoded by the small subunit, okay, and uh, that decoding of the mRNA is directly uh, related to the sequence of amino acids in the polypeptide formed, that is ensured by this adapter which is called as the transfer RNA. So one another important aspect is this that the entire ribosome is associated with three rib, uh, uh, RNA molecules and that is the mRNA, the tRNA and of course the ribosomal RNA which is, not, which is actually an inherent structural and functional part of the ribosome itself. So uh, what is uh, reported is that the small subunit has a channel that is present for mRNA. So this is the entry uh, entry uh, site for the mRNA to enter and this is the exit site for the mRNA to exit the uh, small subunit. What is also present uh, are three pockets. Uh, so you have one pocket, two pocket and the third pocket. And these th three pockets, this one is referred to as the A site which stands for the acceptor site or amino acyl site. So this pocket is large enough to accommodate a tRNA. So what is brought in over here or what comes and binds to this pocket is a tRNA. And this tRNA brings in amino acids and therefore it is known as the amino acyl tRNA. This is what is called as the peptidal site. Now here also this accommodates a tRNA but this tRNA will hold the polypeptide that is increasing in number as the ribosome continues to synthesize protein. And this over here is the exit site 
This is from where the tRNA can exit the ribosome and hence it has been called as the E site. Now, let us look at the fact that you have, when the translation begins, the initiator tRNA coming and binding to the P site and you have to the A site the next tRNA that comes and binds. Okay, but this next tRNA that comes and binds will depend on what is the codon that is present in the mRNA. So, once the mRNA enters the channel that is present in the small subunit, the mRNA is positioned in the channel because of the ribosomal RNA, which is a 16S ribosomal RNA. So, 16S ribosomal RNA actually interacts with the mRNA and positions it. Now, this positioning is important because the start codon that is present in the mRNA is positioned at the P site. Okay, and what comes and binds to the P site is the initiator tRNA, which has an anti codon that can bind to the start codon. So, the start codon is generally universal and therefore it is AUG. So, therefore, the initiator tRNA will have an anti codon that can come and bind to AUG. So, you can observe that at this point, the 16S rRNA is bound to the mRNA, which in turn is bound to the tRNA. So, all the three RNA are in an interaction in the smaller subunit. And it is called as the decoding center. Why? Because the AUG has been read by the anticodon that is present in the tRNA. So, the decoding of the AUG is thanks to the anticodon that is present in the transfer RNA. And that's the reason why this region is called as the decoding center. This tRNA that comes in will have an anticodon that can bind to the next codon. All codons are triplets. So, therefore, an anticodon present over here will bind to a codon that is present over here. And thereby, you have the first, that is the start codon and the next codon already bound to two tRNAs thanks to the fact that this tRNA can come and accommodate itself into the pockets that are present in the small subunit. Now, just say for example, the work that the initiator tRNA has is done. Then this tRNA can translocate to the exit site and once it is in the exit site, it can exit the ribosome. That is the reason why this is called as the exit site. Okay. So, thereby, this gives an understanding as to why the small subunit is called as the decoding center. And one is able to see that the structure of the 30S allows the 30S to function in such a way that it can initiate the uh, translation process. Now let us go to the large subunit that is the 50S subunit and understand its structure with relation to its function. So again you have the 30S subunit with its three pockets and it has the mRNA entering these uh, small subunit through the entry channel but what, what completes this is the binding of the 50S to this and the binding of the 50S to the 30S is such that the 50S also has three pockets that complete the pockets that are present in the 30S. So now this is the complete A site, this is the complete P site and this is complete E site. So effectively the pockets that are present in the small subunit are complemented with pockets in the large subunit. Apart from these three pockets which can hold the tRNA, you also have a, a, a pocket over here or a region over here that is called as factor binding site and this factor binding site helps in regulating the translation process which one can understand when one understands the entire me mechanism of translation. Just above the P site, so if this is the P site, just above the P site and the P site also overlaps with a little region of the A site. So, this site is what is called as the peptidal transfer center and this peptidal transfer center just above it is a 
exit channel which allows the polypeptide the newly synthesized polypeptide to move out of the ribosome so now let's understand that this peptidyl transfer center has uh, the infoldings of the 23s rrna so what is present in this area is the 23s rrna and that part of the 23s rrna that contributes to catalysis what is the catalysis of over here the catalysis over here is peptide bond formation between two amino acids and that reaction is being carried out by the 23s rrna now so let us understand that you have a trna over here or uh, the trna over here alludes to whatever is the codon that is present in the mrna so say for example the codon present in the mrna over here is that for lysine then the amino acid that is present with this trna or the trna that brings in the amino acid lysine is the lysyl trna okay so therefore if there is a codon for lysine over here there has to be lysine present over here as an amino acid brought by the adapter trna one already knows that when the initiation has to begin the first trna that comes and binds to the start codon is always the initiator trna and in the prokaryotes the initiator trna always brings in what is called as formyl methionin f met so in this circumstance is what is understandable is that when the large subunit comes and binds to the small subunit that is already bound to two trna one at the p side and one at the a side what happens next is that this trna changes its orientation and brings the two amino acids close to each other why is that needed to be done because the amino acids have to be bonded by a peptide bond now if a peptide bond has to be formed between these two amino acids in a condition like this the two amino acids are very far from each other so to enable the peptide bond to be formed the orientation of the trna changes to bring the two amino acids close to each other once that happens you have a peptide bond that is formed between these two amino acids thanks to the 23s rrna that is present in the peptidyl transfer center so what you can effectively see is that the peptide bond formation is due to the catalysis of the 23s rrna in the peptidyl transfer uh, uh, transpeptidase activity of the um, peptidyl transfer center so this is what happens now once you have this uh, dipeptide form so when you have two amino acids linked to each other by a peptide bond this is now considered to be a dipeptide so once the dipeptide has been formed the amino acid from this trna is released and now this trna is associated with the dipeptide so eventually what is going to happen is that you would have the uh, trna that was present in the p site moved to the e site okay and you will have this trna that is bound to the dipeptide move to the p site leaving the a site empty okay when the a site is empty what is also happening is that the mrna moves the third codon is in place over here okay so along with the translocation of the trna the mrna also moves and now the a site is free again so if the a site is free again and the first trna present in the e site is moving out from the exit site you have the next trna coming in at the a site got it now this trna will bind to or interact with the codon that is present on the mrna over here okay and again this trna will change its conformation bring this amino acid close to this to form the next peptide bond so the peptide bond will now be between this amino acid and this amino acid so effectively this is what is going to happen keep happening and you would have a long stretch of polypeptide being formed again and again because of one one peptide bond forming each time a trna comes here and binds to this 
So understandably, this tRNA carry, carries the polypeptide and hence this is the P site. This is the A site because every time a new tRNA is being accepted. So this is what the structure function aspect of the 50S ribosome, 50S subunit is. So effectively, it is a peptidal transfer center with the 23S rRNA doing the job of an enzyme. The active site is this where you have the peptide bond formed. Please do keep in mind that the ribosome has the ability to ensure the peptide bond is formed between uh, the two uh, correct amino acids based on whatever is the codons present over here the correct amino acids have to form the peptide bond and the ribosome is able to carry that out through certain conformational and regulatory mechanisms. Thus, you will also observe in the prokaryotes something that is called as polyribosomes. So, let us consider this is the RNA and you have a ribosome that is assembled on the mRNA and that mRNA is being read by the ribosome and a small polypeptide chain has begun forming. This ribosome will have moved to form a longer polypeptide, will have moved further to form a longer polypeptide. So as the reading of the mRNA is happening, you can see that the polypeptide chain is also increasing because the codons present in the mRNA have been decoded and Based on the decoding, you have the entire amino acid sequence in the polypeptide chain forming. But the polyribosomes or the reason why you call something as a polyribosome is because once you have this ribosome having begun translation, moved to a certain region, this portion of the mRNA is free again for another ribosome to come and bind and begin the process of translation again. So, what you would effectively see that on an mRNA, you will have several ribosomes present with different extent of synthesis happening. So, when you have a single mRNA bound to by several, poly, uh, several ribosomes, each one synthesizing the uh, polypeptide chain, then such a complex is what is called as the polyribosomes. And there are microscopic evidence of polyribosomes formed. So you can see that an mRNA is bound to by several uh, ribosomes. So you can see that there are polyribosome structures present in the uh, cytoplasm of the bacteria. So therefore, let us conclude. Ribosome can exist as small subunit and large subunit. And while translating, these two subunits come together to form what is called as the 70S. The basic constituents of ribosomes are the ribosomal RNA and proteins. And the proteins only have a stabilizing effect on the rRNA, which in actuality is the main functional component of the ribosomes. In the small subunit, the rRNA does the job of decoding or helping in the decoding of the codes in the mRNA while the uh, large subunit has a 23S rRNA which acts as an enzyme to actually catalyze the formation of the peptide bonds. So the ribosomes have specific channels to bind to mRNA and to allow the newly synthesized polypeptide to move out and also pockets to bind to tRNA thereby the ribosomal RNA, the mRNA and the tRNA is present in the same particle. The catalytic activity of formation of peptide bonds is a responsibility of the ribosomal RNA in the large subunit. Therefore, it is an example of a ribozyme. Thus, ribosomes are small particles with a very important function of the cell, that of protein synthesis referred to as translation. This is efficiently accomplished by all the three RNAs, mRNA, rRNA and tRNA with all the three coordinating their roles within the ribosomes to enable a polypeptide to be formed. Thank you.